Well, my full name is Lester Albert Sobel. In regard to rank, I never got any higher than, uh, what was it, uh, first lieutenant or whatever. Uh, it's not the sort of thing that I speak about uh, after this any great pride. Uh, I was in the army. I, I served in, in combat from almost the beginning uh, of, the, uh, of the United States activity in World War II. I, I was a landman uh, in, the, in the 10th Armored Division. In other words, we, had, we used the tanks. The first place we landed was northeastern France. We used the uh, landing craft. F from the boat, from the ship, we used landing craft uh, to bring us on shore. Paratroops landed before we did. But uh, we were the first uh, uh, people to, to go in by boat and, uh, and land. Early in the game, they decided that, that uh, I was constantly giving them better uh, information as to how to use uh, the roads and how to use the area uh, with this armored division. It's, it seems I was one of the, uh, a rare group who was able to uh, do things, uh, to draw maps and to follow maps that uh, a fair percentage of people found much more difficult and at, at times that it would make it more possible for some of the members of the unit that was then going into combat to go into combat and come out more safely than as if they went into it in, a, in an area or a way that would make it more easy for the Germans uh, to hit us. And if I knew that it was going to hit me into a place where I wanted to hit the people who I thought should be hit, I was very happy to do it. And I didn't want to get killed myself, but yet I, if I had to risk my life, I risked my life. Uh, if you were in that position, I guarantee you would have felt the same way. You would have risked your life. It's a very uh, unpleasant, unhappy situation. You sleep in the same tents, you eat the same, uh, eat the same foods together, you get to know each other, you, you kibitz with each other, you talk, you chat, you laugh at each other, you might have an occasional dispute with, uh, with one or two of the others, and someone will say, look, look you idiot, he, he didn't mean it when he said it that way, he's just he's too stupid to know any better. Uh, that sort of conversation took place, and then when some, one of those guys who you had a, a maybe a dispute with, if he were to get killed, you'd feel very unhappy about it. And quite a few of the people I knew, after risking their lives, wound up dead. It happened. And I, I'm happy that it didn't happen to me. Eisenhower spoke quite decently, incidentally, when, uh, when we, usually when he would uh, talk to me, it was because he was asking me a question about what happened here or there or the other place. My encounter with Eisenhower was almost always <laughs> brief, and I think he sometimes wanted more to uh, get me to, uh, uh, to, to be willing to make it back and forth as, as though we were on a, an, even, an even level. I couldn't act as if I was on an even level with him. It was Eisenhower, he was the, the top dog. <laughs> I heard the first shot fired, it was fired by planes, planes that came over, the German planes. And from then on we were in combat for one month, cold, cold weather, very cold weather, a month of daily uh, fighting and, and, and daily loss. The Germans had some of their best units there. When I say their best units, I despise them, of course, but they, they killed a lot of people and so that we are happy to say. Ultimately, we beat them. But it was uh, a very difficult uh, situation. And uh, it was one of the situations in which I felt very unhappy, uh, very sad, is what I mean when I say unhappy. Uh, actually, it, it hurt when, uh, when someone who you'd, even if it is just to play cards with them once in a while, he goes and get, get, gets killed, and it hurts. It actually hurts. When I, I knew the war was, uh, that the Battle of the Bulge had ended, I knew because there were, had been a, a few surrenders. And I knew that if those units were surrendering, that this section 
of, of, the, of combat, especially where it was the Battle of the Bulge, this section of combat was over. And if this section of the combat was over, perhaps it was over only because no one else was, would be able to continue fighting. So that's, that's more or less what I, I thought. That's what, more or less I had analyzed it in that fashion. What happened was we, we, we got into it, we got into combat, and we, and we won. We were not going to be killing any more people, and our friends were not going to get to be killed either. Uh, the, the delight that I felt, if you had taken out a thousand dollars and given it to me and said, here, Lester, take this, but fight one more day, I would say, take your money back. Uh, and I'm a guy who likes money, incidentally. <laughs> I'd seen fr friends, people I'd, I'd trained with, people who uh, had got, been uh, served with me, people I knew who, who I'd, I'd seen uh, die. If they had stayed alive just two more days, they would have uh, been, uh, remained alive. Uh, I thought of that also. Home was New York City. And uh, the people who I knew in New York City, and who knew me, they were so happy to see me. They may not have liked me just when I went in, but when I came out, they liked me. I was surprised upon occasion at how nice they were. Uh, they actually uh, treated us that way because I'm positive they believed that that was the right thing, that what we had done was right, and that we deserved to be properly treated. I'm positive that that was the way it was, because it certainly looked that way to me. The thing is, I wanted to see the, my family. The important thing was that my family was there, and they were able to see me, and I knew that they were so worried about me. I, I couldn't... I couldn't tell them how, how much I enjoyed seeing them because they had to tell me how much they enjoyed seeing me. And I understood it. I understood completely why they were worried about me. Most of the time I was in combat, I was at the very f front uh, leading the 10th Armored Division. So that uh, for a good long time, what happened was I wrote them and never said a word about being in combat. But they didn't, they didn't know what we were doing then. They didn't have the slightest idea that we, we couldn't tell them we're going to combat on such and such a date. We could not. First of all, if I was start telling what I was doing, uh, my letter would have been sent back and said, you know you can't write this. You know that's not permissible. <laughs> First of all, I knew, and of course I wouldn't uh, do it. And besides that, I didn't want them to know that I was actually going to combat every day. And people with me were being killed. I, I, was, I was going to write that at home. Obviously that. Uh, we were married for several years, and uh, one time I was replacing some handkerchiefs and socks in the chest of drawers, and I came upon this box. It was closed. I opened it up. I looked inside. So there was a medal and some battle stars, and so I questioned my husband, and I said, could you tell me about this? I've never seen it before. And I got a bronze star. Uh, at the set time because they were handing out bronze stars. And he proceeded to tell me that he had been sighted approximately three times before he actually received his bronze star. I believe that they were moving so quickly in, uh, across Europe that they didn't have a time for, for the ceremony and waited when I guess there was a lull or they had secured a certain area and presented the bronze star. And I was given it my award uh, under the goal, which is uh, which makes a person feel very good. You, you understand. And in his telling of the terrible slaughter and the fact that only seven people came back across the river and one man couldn't swim and he helped bring him across the river, I would think maybe that's one of the reasons. One time that he was cited. I don't know of the other actions for which he was cited because he's a very modest person, and also I'm sure it's very painful to recall all the things that happened. So that I think he was quite extraordinary, and uh, he's a person who is so kind and compassionate, and yet he had to do what was, was right and just, and he did it, and I'm very proud.